Here we go. Going to the front compartment. It has a manual crank handle for the two front jacks. I'll show you here in a minute where it goes in. It's got one 12 volt battery on the unit. Also has a battery disconnect on the top of the battery box. So that if you don't want the trailer draining the 12 volt juice out of the battery, you can turn the key at the top off and pull the key out. It'll save all the 12 volt that's in the battery whenever you take the key out. Whatever's left in it. Does have a vent on the side for the battery. We have our up and down button for the front jacks to take it on and off the vehicle. We're gonna come around to the gas bottle section. You move this gas bottle out in behind there, there is the hole for the two landing jacks on the front that uses the split handle for raising the jacks up or down manually. We have two 20 pound propane cylinders. This one here works off the little regulator on this side, but it's actually worked off the main regulator on the opposite side of the unit. We have a park cable hookup and a satellite hookup out here. The fresh tank drain is right in front of the front axle. That side right there. The cap's not on it. The cap's in the back compartment on this side over here. Lug nuts have been torqued at 100 foot pounds. That's what's recommended on the side. The tires are air pressure, which is 80 pounds on the side of the tire cold. We have a stabilizer jack behind the rear axle on this side over here that is for stabilizing the trailer only. It doesn't lift for leveling, just stabilizes. Then we got our big compartment. Little black cap is for your fresh water drain. Three quarter inch nut is for the two stabilizer jacks on the back. And off to the right hand side here is where the water pump is. The water pump's already got a bypass valve on it and a hose for winterizing the unit. Then I gotta still screw down the panel here to protect the water pump so that when you put stuff in that back compartment, it doesn't get over and up and against the water pump. We have an outside shower <coughs> excuse me it gives you hot and cold running water to this side of the unit we have our fresh tank fill and our city water connect when you hook to the city water connect you'll want to have a regulator on there that cuts the water pressure down between 41 and 45 pounds of pressure we got our termination valve next the two inch gray valve in the front is your kitchen sink bathroom sink and your shower water the three inch valve in the back is the toilet water only and it also has a black tank flush that's on the opposite side of the trailer from this side. And you can hook a water hose and regulator up to it. Once you got your black tank completely dumped, turn water pressure onto it. It has a little aerator on the inside that spins around and cleans more of the debris out of the black tank only. This is your power cord. 30 amp goes on, makes a quarter of a turn, tighten up the black knob. It's 25 foot long, but it is a 30 amp service. It is also prepped for a backup camera. Has your little luggage rack on the back. It's got a receiver on it. Your spare tire is mounted to the bottom of the rack. 80 pounds of pressure in it too. As we come around to this side over here, you have your two low water drain points up underneath the fender skirt metal on this side here. The red is the hot side of the water system. The blue is the cold side of the water system. Door enters you into the bathroom so that you don't have to trace through the whole trailer to get to the outside of the bathroom. We have our black tank flush, which once you have the black tank completely dumped, you can hook a water hose and regulator to this side here. The little aerator spins around on the inside of the black tank, cleans more of the debris out of the black tank only. We also have our second stabilizer jack mounted right there in front of the steps. We have our two outside speakers for the stereo. There's a place for a TV to come into this bracket here. Plugs into the 110 outlet. And then we have the park cable hookup. Oh, that's the 110 outlet there. Park cable hookup and satellite hookup there. Outside of the furnace is next. It already has the mud dauber screen over the outside of the furnace. It's gonna suck cold air in the top, hot air out the bottom. Very well investment to have the screen on there. We're gonna come to the hot water heater. It has its own little screen on it. 
customer required a new anode rod. But the electric switch for the hot water heater is in the lower left hand corner on the outside. And then your gas switch is going to be on your monitor panel on the inside. We're going to step right past the door for a minute. On this side over here is your other 20 pound propane cylinder, which has your main regulator on it. The arrow's pointed to where this one here, clear inside the eye. As soon as this tank would happen to come empty, it's gonna turn red inside the eye, indicating that the bottle it's pointed to is empty. Then all you have to do is flip the arrow to the other side there, work off of it while you take this one off and take it to town and have it refilled. Since I worked off this one, I'm gonna flip it back to that side there. One more thing to show you on the outside. It does have a hookup for a solar panel that if you wanted to buy the solar panel to come out and hook up to this side of the trailer that will charge the battery only. I ain't got no finger to get that open. But it has a two prong plug in that you hook your solar panel into to charge the battery on the front of the unit. Now we're gonna go back to the inside. Steps, try fold out. step up inside the door it has a working fire extinguisher on the left hand side as we step in we're gonna come up to the very tip top the first blue light turns your LED lights underneath your awning on second blue light turns your mood lights above the slide room on this one here is the little scare light on the front of the trailer this one turns your center roll lights on in the living and kitchen area it also has a 110 outlet on either side of the door as we come in. We're gonna come down to the monitor panel. We're gonna push the battery button. It shows you fully charged. To get an accurate reading on the battery, you wanna have your 110 line unplugged and then push that button. Fresh water tank was filled with water and emptied. Black tank and gray tank are still full. Has to be took over and dumped. Down here on the bottom, the red switch on the right hand side turns your water pump on between the fresh water tank and the faucets. The second red button to the left of that turns your hot water heater on gas. When we turn it on, the little red light in the center comes on. It's gonna stay on for just about a minute. Once the red light goes off, it will go through three lighting processes to light the hot water heater on gas. So we're gonna turn that right back off since it doesn't have water in it. The light above the sink has a push button to turn it on. We're gonna come up to the very top. We're gonna to run the slide room out. It's always good to make sure there's not a tree or a vehicle parked up along that side of you so you're running the slide dream out. Then we're gonna to go to the switch to the left of that which extends the awning on the front of the unit open. I can't get the awning all the way out with the slide in truck camper on the front but I'll take it out as far as we can. Each one of the arms has a pull down part. The bottom arm pulls down that puts the pitch of the rain going off that corner of the awning. There's one on the back arm and one on the front arm. We do have our LED lights up underneath the awning that are blue. Pretty cool looking. We have two keys for the unit. One purple key does the front door lock and deadbolt. The other purple key does the back door lock and deadbolt, and then you have a 751 key for all your outside compartments and your outside shower. Sink's pretty self-explanatory. We have the stopper for holding water in it. You got your hot water on your left side, your cold water on the right side. It does have a cord that pulls out for spraying your dishes off. It goes back up and in. We'll put the mount over the top of the sink so it gives you more counter space we're going to come back to the microwave microwave has a clock button so you can set the clock on it let's say it's 4 30. 
I'm gonna hit the clock button again to the two center eyes are flashing. The only reason I set the time on the microwave is I can tell if the trailer's lost one ten power to it. If I come back to it, it doesn't have the proper time. We also have on the hood range, we have a light for the stove top and a fan. For the fan to work properly, the two tabs on the outside of the vent have to be opened up. Allows the smoke coming from the inside to the out. Does have a glass stove top. Had to put new hinges on it. We're going to lift it up. Fold it out of the way. Then we're going to come back to the knobs on the stove. We're going to light them. Striker on the left hand side lights all three burners up on top of the stove. Then we're going to come down to the bottom. We're going to turn it to where it says pilot on. On the oven, you have to hand light it. It'll light right here to the right side of the main burn tube. We're going to come up to the refrigerator. It has an on and off button on it automatically. The lights come on on the inside. It has a pretty good sized freezer up in the top. We're going to come right down below that, push the center of the breaker box. The breakers are marked from the top to the bottom, exactly what they are. And all your 12 volt car fuses on the right hand side are marked from the top to the bottom. And it gives you three spots at the bottom that don't have anything in them. If I'm not mistaken, when one of these fuses blows, it has a red light on the right hand side of the fuse. That you can also see through the tinted window on the front. We also have a carbon monoxide detector an LP detector, pretty good sized pantry space to the right side of that. Got a little storage up here above the refrigerator too. Cereal, flowers and sugars. We're gonna come back here to the thermostat for the furnace and air conditioner. When you turn it on, it's gonna give you your fan speed high, low, and auto. You always wanna run it in the auto position Hit the mode button one more time, brings it down to the cool side. You'll set your temperature down for it. Hit that mode button one more time. It says furnish to the right hand side of that. You'll dial your temperature up for it. Hit that mode button one more time. Since the furnace kicked on, it's gonna take you just a minute before it kicks back off. Two switches on the inside. The one on the left hand side turns the light in the bathroom on. The one on the right hand side turns the exhaust fan up in the ceiling on. And that fan also has a max air cover over it so that you can leave the vent open all the time. We also have our GFCI outlet in the bathroom that protects all the 110 outlets in the unit. We have our plug for the sink. We have a single foot flush on the right hand side of the toilet. Should have directions up in the lid. Shows you fill it halfway full of water. Do your business. Push the pedal all the way down, fills and dumps. Same way with your shower and the tub. You got your hot water on the left hand side, cold <coughs> water on the right hand side. Then it also has a plug for the tub for littler ones. <coughs> and a privacy curtain for while you're taking your shower. The bunk area has a light above each one of the bunks and it has a 110 outlet on the wall on each one of the bunks, top and bottom. There's a ladder for going up to the top bunk. Comes up, lifts out, hangs right here. Climb up to the top bunk there. Before you run the slide room back in, you wanna make sure that you put that ladder up and put it back inside of its holder. It also has a 110 outlet on the outside of the bunks, close to the dining area. The light above the table has to be turned on by hand. You got a little push button in the center of that. Your tabletop does come off the two pedestals, goes between the two dinette benches. Your two back cushions come over the top of the table to make a smaller bed. <coughs> we also have a fire escape window. The red handle indicates that it is a fire escape window that you can slide the window open, slide the screen open, and you can access out the left-hand side of the window. We do have storage underneath each one of the benches. A little push button on the light above the couch. Couch will trifold out into a bed. There's also a place for a TV here, a 110 outlet to plug it into. We also have a power booster down here. Push the little button, the green light comes on, amplifies the antenna on top of the trailer. 
And we also have a 12 volt storage port at the top. We also have another USB port down here at the bottom. We have your hookup for your DVD player. And we also have a satellite hookup inside there. The hooks of the outside satellite connection. Little button turns the stereo on. We have zones one and two for your speakers. Zone one's inside, zone two's outside. But it'll also play a DVD between the stereo and the TV if you hook your S cords up to the three connections over here and the three connections behind the TV. It does have pretty good size cabinet space down below there. Also has cabinet space above. Your heat will come through the registers in the floor. Your AC will come through the round vents in the ceiling. We also have a fire smoke detector right above us. We're gonna come up into the bedroom area. We have a vent that brings heat into the master bedroom. The two lights in the master bedroom have to be turned on by hand. They have a little push button in the center of those. We have a 110 outlet on either side of the bed, and we also have a 110 outlet to the headboard. We also have the round vent in the ceiling to bring AC into the master bedroom. There is a place on this wall over here that will mount another TV, a 110 outlet to plug it into, and a park cable hookup or antenna hookup to hook the TV to. It does have a privacy door that slides back and forth, blocks the master bedroom off from the kitchen area. And we do have storage up underneath the bed. Pretty good size storage area underneath there. Mm -hmm. Do have another fire escape window here. Red handle comes up, goes through the center of the window frame for an access out here. Does have a little red handle on the screen, lifts up out of the holder, slides out. Red handle here comes out, goes all the way through the window frame for accessing a fire escape in the master bedroom. Then all the paperwork that I found is in the cabinet right as we come into the door. That was all the paperwork that was on the unit when I come into it. Do have a 110 outlet right there by it. Does have pretty good size storage space to the right side of the door as you come in. That's basically everything on your unit. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them the best that I can. And thank you for your time.